this life on the road is killing me And I wish like hell I could pay the bills from home I work 12 on and pull 12 at home Working on the whiskey that's working on me Another episode of Something in the Water podcast. I'm Sean Clark here with the other co host, Uncle Dave Griffin. And our guest this time is Will Mosley and Benji Taylor. Glad to have you guys. What's Glad up? To be here. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So tell us now what brings y'all here? Well, obviously, you're musicians, right? Guitar playing, you, you might could say that. Guitar playing fools. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like to have on here. We've had many different uh, artists on here. We've had painters and photographers and dancers and everything, but we kind of key on the music. We like that. So I'm I uh, have known Benji for quite a while. Uh, back in the uh, the days of Landy Strickland. That's right. Right? That's right. Uh, that's kind of where you started out. That's right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, our paths first crossed when, uh, when you were opening for Leon Russell in Orlando. Oh. The first time we actually. Really? Actually, yeah. Dang. Yep. Well, he was living, he was in a dream state when you. Yeah, uh, well, boy. Well, well we was... crossed paths in that dream because uh, <laughs> that was fun. I was there. I don't <laughs> remember that. Did you come up and say, hey? I did. I oh, did. God. I, actually, it was uh, Paul Lee was, had made it happen where I was able to be there. Yeah. And uh, it, it was towards the end of the thing. Paul was like, hey, if you want to hang around, you know, you can come out back and meet. You know, meet Leon. I was like, actually, Uncle Dave ain't busy. Why don't you introduce me to him instead? <laughs> so, like, I'll probably cross paths with him before I will Leon again. So, well, I'll be back. Yeah. Did you live down there? I was living over in Daytona at the time. In Daytona. Yeah. Okay. Well, Paul Lee that he was talking about is uh, our dear, dear friend who was the sound man for Leon Russell at the time. This would have been 2015, January 2015, and that was the Pulse mm-hmm. nightclub. That's right in uh, Orlando. Was it? The, was it Pulse? Yeah. Okay. Did you say Orlando? Right. It was Orlando. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was the Pulse. It was a big old corner. It, I don't know what it used to be, but it was huge. It was big. Yeah. It was a huge sloped theater. How about that? Where you're in the green room. You got a, a little, Under, you're in a basement. In the catacombs. <laughs> yeah, like you're coming through these hallways. Like, it was, it it was, was awesome. Yeah. It was great. And Sean uh, uh, got the same treatment, too. He got to open for Leon. The next year, yeah. Yeah. But it was Paul Lee that made that happen for us, and he made that happen for you as well. That's that right. was uh, our old buddy, Paul Lee. who. So you got to open for Leon, too? No, no, no. I, I just was able to. Go he was able yeah, to go yeah. to okay. the got show him. that night. Yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good time. Yeah, man. And uh, and so, Will, now you have not been in music very long. Nope not uh, not very long. Uh, two years. May 29th was two years. Two years. May twenty ninth. Wow. Uh, so uh, Will is a. Uh, uh, a late bloomer, as, mm-hmm. as they say. Now, how old were you two years ago? 20. 20. Okay. You were a little later than I was when I first picked up a guitar. But see, there's the old saying, it don't matter when, all you got to do is do it, you know. And uh, Will is enjoying a, uh, a pretty good uh, 
uh, little little uh, rise of uh, uh, of uh, what they call that celebrity. Right now, I don't know now, about I know, celebrity, I will, I but I've far, been blessed at this point I'll for say, sure. I'll say that you're making a, a, a lot of noise. <laughs> That's right. We're trying and, anyway. Yeah, We're trying to make a push. Well, uh, I saw y'all. The two of y'all had a little duo going over on uh, uh, at Side Pockets in Brunswick. It's probably a good three months ago, probably. And uh, I mean, you're just up there killing it, you know. Uh, and you had a good crowd and a uh a you had a good reception there that night. So I'm thinking that if you if you go in places and doing that same thing everywhere you go, you're gonna build up a following pretty darn going quick. Well we're trying. Yeah. That's what we're hoping for anyway. Yeah. Uh well tell us uh uh what's going on with you right now. I mean you Life's guys, been busy, Uncle Dave. Yeah. We've uh I just graduated and, uh, you know, like everybody else, my dreams to play music for a yeah. living. So, but with, uh, with some advice from some people that I think highly of, yeah, including my parents, they wanted me to make sure I finished college. So I made sure I got that done. And then, that's uh, a good thing. That's right. It's always something to go back to. And, and right now I'm just, I'm running with it. Yeah. I'm just trying to book as, I say as many, but that's kind of a. You staying busy. I'm just trying to stay busy. That's what I'm trying to do. That's right. Where'd you go to college? Georgia Southern is where I graduated from. That's my old alma mater. Uh, Well, you can't call it an alma mater unless you graduated, can you? I went for one quarter. (laughs) (laughs) And I learned that college was not for me. (laughs) But, uh, yeah. Georgia Southern, what was your major? Biology. Biology. Don't ask. <laughs> I don't know. I, well, don't... I bet you can dissect a frog. I can. <laughs> or a cat. Or anything else. <laughs> it, was, it was wild. Uh, I think I just took the first couple classes and they were hard. And then I took it as a challenge. And I was like, I just, now I got to finish it. Like, yeah. So. But you did I go did. all the way. I all did. Right. It that's, worked out. That's good. What can you do as a biologist as far as it, a, a Most of the jobs job. without any further education is uh, on the environmental side of things. So like testing, you know. Uh, Health department, that's, kind that kind of work. That kind yeah. of work. You're a school teacher, you probably get that, that too. But we ain't messing with all those boring things. We're going to go for music. That's right. <laughs> we're going to go for broken yeah. until we're broke, and then we're going <laughs> to go for something well, else. Uh, it's a hard road to hoe. But, uh, and especially these days, seems seems like it's uh, more of a challenge these days in music, but uh, it ain't to say you can't. Everybody can do it. If you put your mind to it, you know, and you get behind, uh, get the right people behind you and everything, it's easily doable, at least uh, as far as, as, as making a fairly decent living, too, you know? That's right. How long you been in it, Benji? Music? Yeah. Uh, I was what, 15. 15? So, 20. Guitar? Yeah. Guitar, a little bit of bass. Yeah. But, uh. That's 22 years, I guess. Something like that. <laughs> hung, it, yeah. hung it up for a few years, a time or two, and then just <laughs> always wind up coming back around and picking it back up yeah. and making another little run. And How old were you when you started playing out for money? Um, <clears throat> I actually started with a traveling evangelist, and the, we would go, we'd load up on a bus on a Friday and go all weekend long, and, uh, Travel around doing that, and then I think when I was I, I was fifteen when I started that, <clears throat> and seventeen I went started at Jimbo's over there, at uh right there by Benton Lee's. So oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was yeah it's been a been a while of doing it going out <laughs> and doing it. She started with the uh, uh, evangelical. evangelical. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
started out there and then went to Southern Rock and then did a like heavier new metal kind of kind of sound and then it's like most people that do heavy metal they when that peters out they go to Southern Outlaw Rock you know <laughs> it always seems to kind of yeah. focused on down to that so mm-hmm. that's that's kind of the route I took with it so well it's all music is what it boils down to and uh you get the uh, common denominator is you learn how to play three chords (laughs) and then that three chords turns to about 12 and then you get better and better on the instrument and you can you can go to any genre of music after that you know uh depending on if you got uh what it takes you know uh I like a good polka. That's right. That's right. <laughs> if a polka band comes calling, I don't know. It depends on depends on how hungry you are. I guess. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, you know, uh, we've been in all kinds of bands all of our lives. You know, and that's true what you say about once it gets in your blood. You just can't let it out, you know. That's right. It's going to be there. And, uh, Will, you, uh, being new to this, did something inspire you to say? What triggered it? Yeah, I got this music bug. All right, so I was in a... When I graduated high school, I got a football scholarship to go to Knoxville, Tennessee, and play football at a Division three school. Awesome. And uh, I got up there, and I made it to my second year, and I figured out I was coming home. I just, I'd had it. I was yeah. ready to come home. It was yeah. just time. And uh, I had picked up the guitar and had tried to learn. While you were in cool college? In college. Yeah. And never, never could put anything together. Never could just get the little breakthroughs. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And uh, I finally, I had probably, I was good three or four months right before I finally came home that I was, I was ready to get home, but there, I had the time I had to be, you know, I had those, like I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. It was there. There was three or four months left, but I had to be there for three or four months, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I picked up a guitar and just went to playing. And I mean, I played and played and played and played. It seemed like every, every waking moment that's that I wasn't busy. That's what I was doing. And, I kind of found a little breakthrough there and honest, it's the only thing that, uh, I've ever done in my life that I was ever like this passionate about. I, mm-hmm. I truly just love like sitting down with a guitar and mm-hmm. writing a song or starting mm-hmm. writing it. You know, you know how writing goes, writing's mm-hmm. a tricky mm-hmm. thing. People say, Oh, well, we'll, we'll schedule a write. <laughs> that, that, that's yeah. the craziest thing to ever to me. Cause that don't work for me. Like, I mean, <laughs> We may get together and try to put something together, but these guys that are like, okay, at Tuesday morning at eight o'clock, we're going to get together. We're going to write a con- we're going to write a song. I'm like, I just don't like. I have to have some kind of inspiration, but you know, every now and then you sit down with nothing on your mind and you just try to make it work. And but I love that. I love that element of experimenting. It. You know, mm-hmm. and that's it's just something I found myself to be passionate about. Mm-hmm. It's like trying to show up at eight o'clock. We're going. to Show up at eight and we're going to find a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be there. Like, it kind of comes when it comes. Uh, the more you do it, you can definitely, you know, like I, I've never not sat down with you and not written something when we're trying. Right. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, well, but, it, but sit down by myself. Uh, that's a different story. I'm like, oh, screw it. It ain't, it ain't happening right now. You know. Well, as, as our listeners and watchers know, uh, Sean and I are both uh, passionate about songwriting too, and uh, I thought we, he was going to say we, assholes. We've been doing it, <laughs> <laughs> but we've been doing. I've been doing it since I was twenty, and Sean's probably younger than that. And uh, we're still talking about it music. was songwriting, hmm. and uh, that's that's part of the uh, equation. Is uh, um, you know, you got these professional Nashville songwriters that do schedule it, that clock in at nine o'clock in the morning and sit there in a cubicle and invite 
co-writers over and say, what do you got? You know, and they just go at it, you know, uh, with a blank palette. That could know? be the best time ever or the worst time It can time be. Ever. It can Scoring be. Who you're sitting down or or miss. Miss, you know? <laughs> But that's songwriting. It's very hit or miss. And uh, when it happens uh, and, and you get something out of it, it's the best feeling in the world. That's right. And even when you don't get something out of it, you've you've had a good time doing it, you know. And it ain't like uh, the whole world's going to end or anything. Mm-hmm. You just you just say, well, that one didn't work out. Throw it in the trash, you know. No, never throw anything away. <clears throat> That's the other thing. Uh, always hold on to your s- scraps of paper, you know, because somewhere in there might be the one line or phrase that makes it into this song over here that you hadn't even begun to write. <laughs> That's right. But, yeah, we love it. We love the song right in the end of it. And uh, I'm glad you do, too, because a lot of people that start out, like in your case, you know, they just want to frame the guitar and uh, play uh, Kid Rock or something, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and and then they don't even turn their attention to uh, the heartbeat of music which is the song it all starts with the song and uh, if you can do both you can play the music and write the songs you step ahead of everybody else mm-hmm. and uh, I applaud that in you that you're that you're going after that and it feels so good to you so have you written any uh uh-huh. Quite a few, actually, yeah. just along and along, one here and there. Yeah, about how many you got under your belt now <clears throat> that you can call finished? Somewhere between twenty and thirty. Well, that's good. Heck yeah. Now, Benji, are you a writer too? I'm. You're that no, kid rock guy. I'm the kid. I'm the framer. I'm the, I'm the guy that they that they'll call and say, "Hey, we got a gig Friday, and this guy can't make it." Fram, framer like, comes well, alive. What what style are you playing? Somewhere in this in this vein. I got you. Oh, yeah. But you yeah. frame so good. Yeah, but you frame. <laughs> but you just feel that empty space so well. <clears throat> no, I uh, I've not, I haven't ever. I, I'm. I think I'm too critical of my own self with my songwriting. Like I, I can write a hell of a song on a Friday night, and on a Saturday morning, it's the biggest piece of garbage, <laughs> and just somebody's already wrote something just like that, and it's just now what am I doing? And, you know, but but like the music part of it, I can I feel like I'm more of the contributor. The, the, the sounds, yeah. like I'm 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 better. I feel like. Come up with sounds and mm-hmm. <clears throat> melodies and stuff that, mm-hmm. and you know, finding the minors that might fit here mm-hmm. and, and swap around, which and make always you feel uh, leads, which always assists. That's right, a songwriter. I'm, you know, we, you get somebody on the music side of it, and you're sitting there hammering out words. You know, and he's walking around. How about this? How about this? And that. Mm-hmm. We've sat down a couple times, and that is something I have to say. He's really good at like keeping the flow of a song going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. something that's being wrote, Benji's mm-hmm. pretty good at keeping it like. Keep steering it. You can see mm-hmm. you can see where it's going. He can show you where it's going and mm-hmm. not even have the words. So that is, that's, that's songwriting too. That, I, mean, I was about to say, yeah. I mean, it's it's been the one or two times we've sat down, it's been really. It's not it's not all words. It's the music right. and the everything. But me and Benji's done some shows. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It was a good time. Good times. Yeah. Absolutely. You played with Laney? Not not with uh no, not, I, I did, but not not, not with band. him. But yeah, we did some duo was, shows. Yeah, we did some duos oh, okay. afterwards. Two cans and some over here. Maybe the and, creek. Yeah, the creek, yeah. Yeah, it was that was shortly after the Laney stint <clears throat> when I was trying to I was actually at that point wanting to get in more into songwriting and I had, mm-hmm. you know, at that point found out about the Waycross kind of thing that was going on over here and it's like well i need to be around those guys mm-hmm. like i say me being too critical of myself i'd hear songs that, that y'all had done and like i'd listen to them like american spirit or window pane and like listen to this stuff i'm like man i love it so much and i'll listen to it over and over and i'll start well, i'm gonna write a song like that cool and next thing i know i'm trying to write a song that y'all have already written <laughs> and like following it too close and i'm like all right i can't i'm it's 
I'm not built for it. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I let myself down a lot on that kind of stuff. I did, but, I did that a lot. Like I'd be listening to John Prine all week, man. and then like, man, how he does this, now he does, and the next thing I know, I'm writing a John Prine song. <laughs> exactly. like, I don't think there's anything too wrong with that because uh, it, and you can always you can it, always it might start there change, but the the inflect if you change yeah. an inflection of something, then it's it's different. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, I've done that several times. Be riding down the road listening to a song on the radio, and I'll start singing some new words to that song, uh, Leonard right. Skinner or whatever. And you get home, you just say, okay, I can't do that <laughs> right. musically, right. so I'll throw some new chords behind it and change the melody and all, and it works out. Um, where'd they get the name uh, Baby Jesus? Um, <clears throat> that started... Um, there's a fellow over in, where were we at? What are we talking about? Valdosta. That, that used to be my, his nickname. That used to be the nickname. Really? Back, back when I had long hair. Oh, uh, okay. And started out with Laney. <laughs> <clears throat> I think we were in Valdosta, a guy owned a place called New Boys Pub or Bar. Somebody called me that there, and then like the following week, we moved up to Paul's house in Athens. <laughs> and somehow Ty Manning heard it. And from then on, it yeah, was okay. baby Jesus into baby J into baby into just J. And then, <laughs> so that was just one of them. I was clean cut because when I when I first started with Laney, I was I had just come off of the uh, the rock and roll heavy rock band thing. And I had <laughs> the long hair and wore the rings and all the jewelry and all that. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> Look like a fag, man. Why are you, why are you wearing all this crap? Like, you hey, can really... you go to the miscellaneous pics from where you're sitting? Can you go to the miscellaneous pics from where you're sitting? Huh? Oh, no, Lord. He's got baby Jesus pics. Yeah, so yeah. that's uh, uh, they're uh, like always, they're attached at the bottom. They better be. I didn't send them, did I? Dave's going to have to whip your ass again. Just I didn't send them, did I? He didn't send them. Okay. All right, folks. Uh, Waiting on a griffin. Never mind. <laughs> I forgot to attach them. I had some pics uh, of back in the day. So Lenny told you you could be prettier than him. It was his it was show. Something like that. Well, it's it my show. It worked boy. out nice when, take... when we first started. Because <laughs> when I first started with Lenny, actually when I was seventeen, my brother snuck me in my first bar, and it was Legends of Statesboro. When I come around the corner, he was hanging upside down from the sprinkler pipe. Yeah, I think it was, pretty sure it was needle and spoon playing it, and it was like one of those light came on. This is yeah. what I want to do. Uh-huh. And uh, so, like all all through my time, I I was I was like Laney Strickland is the thing though. That's that's it. That's my yeah. goal. And so anyway, when he was down, uh, he was him and Bubba were doing a bunch of shows over in Blackshear. And when I finally met him, he was he had the full beard and all that, and he did, he wasn't skinny as a rail, and you know, like he was at one mm-hmm. point, clean shaved like I was. Mm-hmm. And we go play shows. And people would show up and be like, man, Lane, I hadn't seen you in forever, man. You look talking great to you. talking to me. Yeah. Uh, and there were times where he was like, I'm absolutely fine with it because they're not talking, talking to me. <laughs> they ain't bothering me. <laughs> so, yeah. That was, and that was the reason my brother snuck me into the bar. He's like, you got to see this guy, man. You look just like him, like <laughs> back in the day. When, so, <laughs> yeah. But <clears throat> we started and he was like, yeah, I'm not really, you don't really fit in with, with you. With your image there, buddy. So, <laughs> well, long after I, I let my beard grow out. and but This is you. Yeah. <laughs> I got everything from you. <laughs> Meanwhile, he didn't turn into David Allen Coe. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Like Ricky Bobby's daddy. <laughs> you ain't first, you're last, yeah. Lane. Hell, I was high when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we, yeah. we haven't even talked where y'all from. Uh, uh, you graduated from uh, Jeff Davis County High School. That's right. In Hazelhurst. Same. Same. Okay. So y'all. So how did y'all run on, up on each other? Just well, known each other for a long, long time. Knew each other's family. We yeah, we, each we've family. known each other. I was about to say we've known each other's family for a while, and uh, 
when I moved home from from Tennessee, mm-hmm. I uh, there was a summer there. I went to work for his dad building cabinets, mm-hmm. and they actually it turned out they were working on my dad's house. And they were there working, and I just kind of jumped in and helped. Yeah. And uh, when they left there, I just kept going and Stayed helping with them. And so we. <laughs> You hid we, the back of the truck. That's right. We <laughs> we worked a, a summer right there, and then I was just just starting, just getting my feet wet a little bit here and there. And then it was a little bit after that we was uh, I think I was back over there doing something at his dad's house, and we got to talking, and I had something coming up. I don't even remember where we played that the first time. I don't know. I remember it different. You went to work for Daddy, and I went to rehab. <laughs> and that's when you had started out and he he had started building it and as i was coming out of rehab that he's like oh boy will now you know he he's he's been getting a following come up i was like really that's cool mm-hmm. so i don't play i don't play guitar anymore i don't do music i'm happy for him and he kept on and it was oh, you time said or, i don't do music yeah anymore. pretty much that's okay. that's why I, I, about four or five years there i i didn't you know how that goes yeah, yeah. i would wake up with a pawn ticket beside me for $150 for a Les Paul and a J45 uh, and you know so uh but anyway he uh he had been started going and getting a getting a following I think mm-hmm. we ran up one time and I matter of fact I think I was playing at church and he he asked me like a B minor chord like show me this or whatever and mm-hmm. I was like yeah cool so that was a while before and I was like yeah I, I remember he played guitar I was like I didn't know he played out like Will you talking about big Will mm-hmm. So anyway, we wound up talking, and he was doing some gigs, and I brushed out the guitar, and I was like, "Screw it all! Yeah, I'll go pick with you sometime." Mm-hmm. Was it was it Douglas that we went and played? It may have been three one seven. I think it might have been three one seven, and went and played, and actually like heard him sing, and I was like, "Holy crap!" Like, That's <laughs> Dylan's place, isn't it? Right there uh, on uh, well, on uh, on the this street. was Trey's. Well, it was, it was Dil- it was Dylan's art studio. Yeah, yeah, and then. Trey put a bakery in it, and then Trey put a restaurant in it. Boy, it's been a while since I've been there. And it's started closed up. now, and now it's Ob's closed back dog. down. Ab yeah. dog. But okay, but he had uh it started there. playing, and I heard him, and I was like, "Holy crap, man! This dude's got a hell of a voice." And so Tom was like, "Hey, if you ever want another guitar player? Hell, I'll go with you." You know, that they get me back out going and doing mm-hmm. stuff now that I'm actually awake after rehab and and you know starting to try to enjoy life again and do stuff. And then uh, after a couple of shows, he's like, hey, I, you know, I wrote some originals. So he showed me one of his original, and I was like, yeah, bullshit, you wrote that. And he <laughs> sent me another one. Like every time every time he's come out, and he's like, yeah, I was working on this little little ditty here. And like just pull out some. He's being pretty modest about his songwriting. I mean, yeah. to me, his songwriting is it's pretty great. That's good. So it just kind of helped me like, all right, yeah, this is something I can buy into. This is something I can believe yeah. in and 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 feel comfortable yeah, being a part yeah. of it. So and it just kinda snowballed from there. So. Yeah, it's excellent. Excellent. I love that uh facet of it too. It's kinda like uh you were just like, nah, I'm done. Yeah. And and Will comes along and the two of you kinda you're helping each other, you know. Oh yeah. That's beautiful. That's awesome. We've had like a lot it. of fun. <laughs> yeah. Had a lot of fun. No doubt. And then I finally got him to help me get a band together. <laughs> I released a I released a song and we had been talking about it. And we were like, we will put a band together and just play like a release party kind of. Mm-hmm. And he was like, all right, just just trust me one time. I was like, hell, I thought I've been doing that for six months. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna call these two guys and we'll get them to come and play. He's yeah. like, just just try it one time. And man, <clears throat> we stepped in and it was just like a breath of fresh air it was to have a band behind you i mean it was yeah. awesome i mean it was the probably the funnest i've ever had playing mm-hmm. and that night was great that first night i mean it's just been since then it's just it's fun it's fun because it, i felt like everybody kind of clicked and i had no experience playing with a band behind me at all right so of course i'm up there making the stupid mistakes you know or not i guess you wouldn't say mistakes but just doing things that I was used to doing playing by myself. I didn't right. have anybody behind me right. following me or me following them. About or people. Working right. together. Right. That's right. And yeah. 
and like you you would see that type of stuff but man it was it's been fun so you since said then. y'all had a release well it, it was funny the way that happened is we had talked about a band thing and he was doing the itunes and so a song was going to come out and there was there was this girl that i was like kind of really interested in kind of wanted to impress a little bit and all and it all in one conversation all came about and i was like hell i bet if we played a full band she showed up she'd see what's up <laughs> i was like hey you know what we need to do we need to play full band at this party we need to have a release for your song and so we got a whole josh foster which knows mm -hmm. jeff chancy and we all got together and jammed and when we first got together the three of us all together it was like holy crap this is what it feels like when when everybody clicks mm -hmm. when when all of a sudden nothing nothing else really matters, mm -hmm. and then we got there that night, and it's like kind of like I told him, it's like, dude, all you gotta do is do your thing, and they because those two guys are amazing together. I mean, they're great musicians yeah. on their own, but then it all came together, and we played that night, and there's se several of them moments, you know, where everything else just kind of fades away, and mm -hmm. everything all of a sudden you, you you're doing something and. Three other guys are doing the same thing and feeling mm -hmm. it, and it's yeah. just that. That's right. That's that's what this is about. That's that, that's, that's that Jason feeling. Chancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jason. and Josh Foster. Josh, Josh Foster. Foster. I yeah. don't know Josh, but we yeah, do, they play we together in, in several other acts, and uh, they just they're just two dialed yeah. in guys that, to say, that those two are know when mm -hmm. to play, know when not to play, and you know that that can they can just natural born feel it, mm -hmm. and and you ain't got to worry about them and. That's the whole, with the, the band, the project, that's the whole thing about it is there's no, because we haven't had an honest God sit down practice. Yeah. But it's more of a, hey, y'all listen to this song and we'll do our thing with it. Mm -hmm. And then we get there and set up and I think we played a wedding sometime back and they were like, you know, do do this style of music. So we did the first set of these love songs and then, I, and it was it was miserable. It was miserable. Don't let him lie. It was sketchy. We, got, the first we took one. the first little break so they could do their dances, and we were all looking at each other like, "All right, let's pack this shit up. And let's yeah. go home. Like, it's, <laughs> it, this ain't it." And then we got it to the second set, and it was. They're like, well, "Could y'all play like some more rock and stuff?" <laughs> oh, absolutely. Right up my and alley. Then, and then that second set started, and then all of a sudden it just kind of clicked back in, and mm -hmm. there it is. I remember Jason <laughs> saying he was like, "By that second song, I looked over there, and I, me and Benji were looking at each other. He's like." <laughs> He's like, we were like, yep, here it is. I feel it again. He's like, everything went back smooth again. But it was <laughs> it. Awesome. You got to play the room. That's, for that's sure. right. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good stuff. Yeah. One of the things that I've found throughout the years is that uh, that first set of the night is often the hardest. Because Absolutely. First set blues. You're waiting on them. Waiting that's on right. them to get get loose enough up. to, <laughs> that's right. and they always to, uh, do because everybody, even like you're nervous because you're on stage, but like they're nervous because they just got there and they got a new dress on or whatever that's they're right. doing, <laughs> and I didn't know he was going to be here or whatever, and it takes them about two hours to that's right. shake all that off, and then they're like, "Hey, that's good," you know. <laughs> that's right. And but like it kills the band right. mean, in the meantime because you you're like you're you not getting want, anything back. It's like throwing. You never want to do yeah, your best yeah. songs at, right out of the gate because you don't want to waste <laughs> them for when they're actually feeling good. So yeah. and you don't want to do the bad ones or they might not get into it. So yeah. it's you, where's you, our yeah, mids? You don't want to uh, <laughs> blow it all and then you got right. nothing. It's like playing racquetball with no walls. Like, yeah, <laughs> waiting wait. on it to come back. <laughs> hey, that's right. <laughs> So y'all have got this band now, and uh, you need a name. Got to have a name. name. Got to have a name, Anybody folks. Everybody has a good idea. We're going to throw just... it out there to y'all now, somethingwaterpodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> or you can just go to Will Mosley and friend him. and uh, Send it to me. I'm all ears. Him. And uh, it's, it's going to be Will Mosley and... Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, the, but like Will Mosley and the, or and something. And something. And uh, Ty Manning's another one that's good with coming up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hookers. Slaw, Slaw Dog Biscuits. biscuits. Slaw Dog Of course, biscuits. now, he, on Slaw Dog Biscuits, he put that one out there, and some somebody came back with that. Not what? him. 
I thought it was because uh, uh, his mom made some slaw dog biscuits. Well, maybe so. And then he he threw that out there as a <laughs> oh, choice. I, I remember yes. I remember him doing a big I, Facebook. I, yeah, campaign, I remember he was asking for and names. And maybe that one just landed in his own backyard. I might have it wrong. <laughs> he might have did the. His mom might have cooked that after the fact, or Will somebody might have suggested that. And the baby Jesus is <laughs> the baby Jesus. There mm-hmm. he is. Yeah. We're mostly in the manger. <laughs> the main, the manger dog, in the main, the, the manged. manged. <laughs> we thought about all the, and the bad habits and yeah, the chicksy yeah. dicks and the, yeah. the but everything Dixie good Rex. has been taken. So, the cunning gotta, stunts. <laughs> I like it. The bloody stools. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> 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 hey. Well, anyhow, if y'all want to get in on that, uh, especially after you hear him play during the music segment, then uh, then you'll have a little more inspiration to maybe name a band. And we're going to do that, too. You want to do that? Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll go, we'll go yeah. Let's do take it. a little break, come back, and... Uh, we'll hear some tunes. Hear some tunes. We'll do it. Let's do All it. right. We'll see y'all in a minute. Something in my brain won't let me stray Something in my veins gonna find its way Something in the water taught me how to pray When the cold black water finds its way into your veins You'll never be the same I'm Will Mosley, and this is Mr. Benji Taylor, and we're going to play you a song called Burning Bridges. It's one that I wrote. I'm warming myself from the ice in your veins, cold in your heart, the sting of your name, a burning bridges. Oh, I'm burning bridges I'm easing myself from the weight of your pain I'm trying to get over the same old thing I'm burning bridges Oh, I'm burning bridges oh, We've crossed this water a thousand times And I always hear the same old lines I promise I'll But baby, this time I'm tired of trying If I escape this hurt one more time I promise I'll be doing better I'm warming myself from the ice in your veins The cold in your heart, the sting of your name I'm burning bridges I'm burning bridges I'm easing myself from the weight of your pain I'm trying to get over the same old thing I'm burning bridges Oh, I'm burning bridges Oh, 
I'm burning bridges I'm easing myself on the weight of your pain I'm trying to get over the same old thing I'm burning bridges I'm burning bridges This is a song that I wrote called Working on the Whiskey. Working on the road, my dear It keeps taking me away from here And home is the only place that I feel the same I'm trying to take the pain away I live with every day Countless nights since I've been gone and this life on the road is killing me And I wish like hell I could pay the bills from home I work 12 on and pull 12 at home Working on the whiskey that's working on me Half a pack of marble lights Looking to get through the night Wishing you hadn't chosen him over me I know it's half my fault You're living in a house I bought But it ain't worth a damn if I ain't there and this life on the road is killing me And I wish like hell I could pay the bills from home I work 12 on and pull 12 at home Working on the whiskey that's working on I'm working on the whiskey that's working on me This town to town, around and round Off and on is dragging me down I can't ever trust you again This life on the road is killing me And I wish like hell I could pay the bills from home I work 12 on and pull 12 at home Working on the whiskey that's working on me yeah, I'm working on the whiskey that's working on me This next one I'm going to play is one that I wrote with a couple friends, and uh, it's called Why. Well, 
Well, the fire still burns Can't find a way to put it out Wasting all my time With my hand on the bottle While the hell you let me down And I'm losing control I got this devil in my ear It started as a whisper Then it turned into a scream Now I hear it loudly And I I'm losing my mind And why did you try to hide what you did to me? I'm pretty messed up I got some spears in my cup They keep pulling me down I can't take another round Think it's time to give it up And I, I I'm losing my mind And why Did you try to hide? Try to hide what you did to me. Well, I'm too far gone. There ain't no way to make it out I got this cold 45 Sitting by my side What do I do now? And I, I I'm losing my mind And why I Did you try to hide? Try to hide what you did to me. Welcome back to Something Water with our guests Will Mosley and Benji Taylor. How about that for some uh, audio <laughs> good? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was some audio good. I'm telling audio you, goodness. you can use that quote. Will Mosley and audio goodness. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, well, we was we was right outside was the great, room uh, uh, listening and uh, powerful, damn. powerful voice. Yeah. Appreciate it. I can understand why people are making such a fuss about you and why you so busy. And I asked Will, I said, when I heard him sing, I was like, mm -hmm. so you've been singing. How, I know you've been playing two years, but how, how long you been singing? He's like, not very long. I, I didn't even start two years ago. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I didn't. Well, I started singing two years ago. That's when I was. Oh, first really? time I ever played out was two years ago. I've been playing the guitar about. Probably three, a little over three years. And then I probably started singing 
somewhat when I started playing, but when I first started playing, I couldn't play a song, so there was nothing to sing, you know. But mm-hmm. once I could play songs, I would say I started singing a little bit, and then it just kind of went from there. Did you ever sing like in the car or to the radio? Or I sung in the shower a lot. It so probably you, so wasn't you nothing knew you, you wanted hit to hear. A note. You didn't sing in church or anything like that. That is pretty original. I mean, this guy just comes out of the womb, you know. Yeah. Now you see why I yeah. kind of jumped on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll take this train. Okay, yeah. so no, you went to high school and then middle school and probably elementary school. You were baseball, football, and all of that. That's right. And, uh, were you what uh, center guard? I played a uh, tackle in high school tackle. and, and okay. guard in college. Okay. Well, I had some pictures, but I forgot to send them to Justin, <laughs> so we would have supported all that. But y'all got to trust me on this, okay? Mm-hmm. He earned a scholarship to uh, Maryville College. Is that Tennessee? Yeah, it was in Tennessee, right yeah. outside of Knoxville. Hell yeah. And... uh as as uh, Will said earlier, he uh, kind of got out of there after a couple of years and uh, headed back home. It was two years and three concussions and <laughs> and COVID. We came home. <laughs> concussions That's, and uh, COVID. I like it. That's the three C's, ain't it? That's right. <laughs> COVID, concussions, and <laughs> came home. Came home. <laughs> uh. And uh, and it was at that point, sometime along there, that you decided that this was what you was going to do. But uh, so a lot of people, including myself, I said back in high school, 11th or 12th grade, I was said, you ain't no singer. <laughs> the hell, <laughs> you know. But I was paying attention all them years, you know, listening to daddy's records and nothing but vocal. You know, it's like, damn, uh, Hank Williams and uh, Marty Robbins with all them harmonies. And then the, the the Four Seasons, the Beatles, the Beach Boys, all harmony groups that I really gravitated to, you know. And at some point when, when I first picked up the guitar and decided that this was thing for me, then I eventually said, you got to sing. Mm-hmm. Uh because of, uh, sorry, Billy Ray, but <laughs> uh, uh, anyhow. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, eventually I moved into the singing part, and then I said, you know, I can sing pretty good, good enough. You, know? you sing amazing. But all that uh, church uh, singing, you know, where you, you kind of learn harmony by osmosis, and then – listening to all of them groups over the years and then picking up an instrument and trying to apply that to everything that I had seen and heard before, then it just kind of came about. So in your case, did you just... I've always loved... I felt like it took a while for me to say, you're going to sing. So yeah, I've I didn't always listen. loved music. I mean, I've always just like listened to music all yeah. the time. But I've never really sang. I mean, I've, yeah. it just... It's just something that just kind of come about, and I will say it took me a good while. I was learning how to play a guitar, but I was also having to learn how to sing. Truthfully, you know, mm-hmm. I would, and I still really? catch myself like in the middle of a song, I'll run out of breath on on certain mm-hmm. lines. You know, yeah, the longer lines or the mm-hmm. the longer notes, I'll catch myself. I'll I'll get down, and, but it's something that. I'm slowly learning. I mean, I'm learning, you know, I'm learning to kind of look ahead in a song, I guess, and know Ooh, when to breathe. That's right. When to, <laughs> when to find your breath. I mean, truthfully. Yeah, I got that too, but it's because of old age. I started singing out of necessity of <clears throat> getting tired of being like, I'm playing guitar and I'm playing, and you know, and like the whole band getting their stuff together. And then you got some singer that don't know how to plug in a microphone. <laughs> Yep. Just because he's got the balls to do it, not that he's better than anybody else in the band. That's right. And I was like, well, we just going to nip this in the bud. <laughs> but, I mean, I still sing like crap forever, you know, and just like, screw it. That's what, that's what we got. One less mouth to feed, <laughs> you know. But 
not that I'm that great now, but just to come into it that strong, man, that's that's something. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty unique. So, uh, as you know, you always have a voice when you start out. Who is it that you're trying to emulate? Uh, I don't know who the fuck I came in. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Uh, this we're is, not on the deep end. This message is brought to you by Bud Light. <laughs> message brought uh. to you by <laughs> Uncle <laughs> Funkle Dave. Uh, um, but, you know, I think I was trying to be Neil Young when I was coming in. That was, that was right in my wheelhouse there. That was the albums. That was the music that was mm -hmm. current, you know. And so I said, I like this finger-picking acoustic guitar intellect, you know. So I went down that road. And uh, so who do you think was your inspiration as far as the voice, the vocal that you threw um, out there? I would say probably the biggest name in country music when, in modern country music, when I started singing was Luke Combs. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would say that. And, uh, but as far as an inspiration to play music, the first band that I ever seen live was Blackberry Smoke. Uh huh. And I am a huge fan of Blackberry Smoke. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I've always said since I've seen them live that if you were ever going to do it as a band, that that's who to emulate. Like, I, you know, they're huge in my opinion mm -hmm. and other people's opinion. Not, you know, they, they vary from, you know, whoever you're talking to, but they're I feel asses. like yeah. they absolutely do it right. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're, <clears throat> they're legit. And I, mm -hmm. that's just something that since the first time I seen them, they've just left that mark and impression as far as performing in front of people with a band. That's, that's where you, that's you want to aim. At. That's where you want to aim. Mm hmm. As far as my voice, of course, I'm a long way from Charlie Starr. But, you know. And I mean, what I heard. He's a long you, way from you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? What I heard. Like, everybody you well is, on your way. That's right. Uh, yeah, you, you don't want to be like anybody else. You, you that's just, right. And you just don't sound like that. You, you sound, you, you've got your own voice, man. And, uh, I mean, you can hear this influence or that influence. But it's, you got a strong, powerful voice, for sure. And and good words. and. Mm -hmm. It's good vibe, man. I'm digging it. Well, I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> Benji, did you sing in any of the bands? Yeah, I've done a lot of a uh, harmony. Yeah, kind of my that's that, that was always my thing. Where did yeah. you get your voice? <laughs> um, pro honestly, probably Laney Strickland. Oh yeah, Go, going out and and you know hearing him what he did and listening and and just something because I mean hearing stuff on the radio and all. And through my parents' records and everything, that yeah. was that was always seemed like something otherworldly to me. It was me it wasn't ever something that was real that I could actually hey, mm -hmm. this this is real stuff until I actually had heard him that first time. Yeah. And then actually playing, you know, on the road with him when it was in those in those times of playing live music and you know, those long hard nights. Yeah. And and when it's just dialed in and right and yeah. felt real. And uh, y'all were full time. Man. Yeah, yeah. It was a while was. there, and it. Uh, Where did what? What was your span? Um, it was two thousand nine. I was actually laid off from power lines, and yeah. uh, I had, I was getting unemployment, and it paid my bills like to the dime. <laughs> and, and uh, it was me and Laney and Polly, and out there the bloodthirsty cowboy era. And, yeah, uh, man. Yeah. I threw time. that name out there, by the way. I don't know if it was ever <laughs> that was, that credited. That was, that was uh, you. You want? I yeah, think. I, 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 that's one. I told him. He's like, I need a band name. I was like, I don't know. I've been throwing around Bloodthirsty Cowboys. Like, I'll take it. So, <laughs> that was that was it. it. We have several song. posters of yeah. the Bloodthirsty Cowboys. Oh, Bloodthirsty How Cowboys. About that? I, it might have been from I, all that. I think I do remember that. I knew that. I knew he got it from somewhere. But yeah. Um, that night, like I say, I uh, my mom sang a bunch of harmony all the time. When she's riding in the car, she'll 
she always hummed it and I always heard different, you know, her doing different parts. And I mm-hmm. guess it always stuck with me that there's something else. Damn sure it is. Even though there's something. I didn't realize that until way late. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. there's always something yeah. else in there that, that can yeah. change the whole thing. And uh, I it's like I like harmony. Vocal harmony. chords. Right. It's the whole, yep. Will Mosley and the vocal chords. Mm-hmm. Now that's uh, that's the beauty of it. We all come at it from different ways, you know. But uh, all four of us, folks, all four of us sing. Can you imagine that? Can you wrap your heads around that? Us four, look at us. <laughs> <laughs> take a good look. We, we take a good look. Take a look. We got long we got, <laughs> we got honey and and. Uh, Watermelon wine flowing out of her. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, at this point, I would like to just say that it's time for a tale of the week. This is my little uh, musings on music and life. And uh, one dollar Dollar Tree glasses. That little 10-year-old girl strode in front of the Sunday morning congregation as the featured soloist for the first time at New Bethel Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan, where her daddy, the Reverend C.L. Franklin, sermonized. Aretha opened her mouth to sing, Jesus, be a fence around me, just days after her mother Barbara had passed away. I'm sure the audience that morning had no idea that the little lady standing in front of them would gain the respect of the world and wear the title Queen of Soul over the next 66 years. A title so well-deserved considering her multiple talents, skillful pianist infused with the gospel fervor of her daddy's church, talented songwriter of career hits, daydreaming, rock steady, and thank, and so stirring vocalist with a voice that transcended generations and musical genres. Aretha Louise Franklin was born at 406 Lucy Avenue on March 25, 1942 in Memphis, Tennessee. At the tender age of 18, she signed on with Columbia Records with very little success over the next six years. In 66, after switching labels to Ahmet Erdogan's Atlantic Records, Home to Ray Charles, Wilson Pickett, Sam and Dave, and Otis Redding, her star began to rise. By the end of the 60s, following the success of classic Aretha songs, Respect, Chain of Fools, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, Think, and Spanish Harlem, she was aptly crowned the queen of... <laughs> Crack of <you. laughs> Thanks. Uh, 1967. I never loved a man the way that I love you was her first number one on the R and B charts. Recorded at Fame Studios and backed by the Muscle Shoals rhythm section. In April of the same year, Aretha hit number one on both R and B and Billboard charts with Otis Redding's Hot Dog Mighty injected. <laughs> R-E-S-P-E-C-T. When I first heard it, I couldn't help but S-H-I-M-M-Y. And as shimmyers go, I weren't much of one. But the Queen of Souls' stirring interpretation of other songwriters' material was a win-win for everybody involved and included some of the finest in the music business. Do Right Woman, Do Right Man, written by Chips Moman and Dan Penn. Chain of Fools, written by Don Covey, featuring the greasy, tremolo-tinged lead guitar lick played by famous Georgia songwriter Joe South. Carol King and Jerry Goffin's Natural Woman. Burt Bacharach, Hal David's I Say a Little Prayer. Spanish Harlem by Jerry Lieber, Mike Stoller, and Phil Spector. Stevie Wonder, Clarence Paul, and Morris Broadnax. Beautiful until you come back to me. Working with Tom Dowd and Jerry Wexler, two of the most gifted record producers in their day, Aretha was just as prolific and successful at writing her own hits, like this one. Turn it up. (laughs) She 
wrote this. There ain't nothing greasier and funkier than this song right here. Yeah. Do it. Got to get to the bridge. Let's call this song exactly what it is. What it is, what it is, what it is. It's a funky and fun I'm feeling. What it is, in the hips from the left to right. What it is, what it is, it's a bass line. Yeah. Do do do. There she goes. Where's the bridge? Come on. Rock steady. Here the bridge. Rock steady. Okay. All right, tone that down. I'm getting loose. <laughs> <laughs> that was Donnie Hathaway on electric piano, Bernard Purdy on the drums, Chuck Rainey on the bass. Cornell Dupree on guitar and Dr. John on percussion. <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. On percussion? Yeah. The song oozes funk. Think, co-written with her husband at the time, Ted White, and made even more popular in the diner scene of the movie The Blues Brothers, where Aretha scolded and deep fried her own screen husband, guitarist Matt Guitar Murphy. You better think about what you're saying. You better think about the consequences of your actions. Oh, shut up, woman. You better think, think, think about what you're trying to do to me. Yeah, think, think, think. Let's go bang, 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 let Live at a little old club up in Buckhead, Atlanta. Who? Matt Guitar Murphy. <laughs> that guy right there. Is it good? Okay. Freedom. 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 Not involved. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> See, they, they went there trying to hire him away from the diner. Four yeah. fried chickens <laughs> and fried food. I can't stop it, y'all. <laughs> I want to see. Uh, I want to see there they go. <laughs> <laughs> Matt just sat down. He's tired of being scolded. <laughs> they're there. They're the problem. <laughs> they're, like, <laughs> they're like, we can't not dance. <laughs> They're like, we'll go sit down. Who's that guy, Dave? Uh, Lou or Lee something. Who do you play with? Uh, he's been in all kinds of he's a session musician, and he probably played with uh, them great horn bands that was always getting hired. One, one out of Nashville, Victor Key. Uh, no, that was Bobby Keys. He's out of Texas, wasn't he? Bobby Keys. Yeah, he played uh, on. Uh, Exile. Yeah, he played on Stones, Stones. and uh, Derek and the Dominoes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we had to see that all mm -hmm. the way to the end, folks. It was too good. 
And uh, her dreamlike and psychedelic hit, Daydreaming, from April 1972. And we don't have to play this. We're not. Wait a minute. Listen to that. I think it's kicking in, man. (laughs) (laughs) You gotta hear this. This is perfect. Now listen to this groove. He's the kind of guy that would say, hey, baby, let's get away. Let's go someplace, huh? Where I don't care. Don't that just make you want to be on the beach with a girl? He's the kind of guy that would say everything. You trust your heart, share all of your love. Till death yeah. do you part. Sea breeze and waves sloshing. I wanna be what he wants, when he wants it, and whenever he needs it. Uncle Dave's taking a trip tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Come on back next week and we'll, we'll listen to it. <laughs> Nobody Some more. knows it yet, but he's taking a trip. All right. Psychedelic soul. Those fun. were the songs that she wrote. Over her career, she's been rightfully honored. 18 time Grammy Award winner. Star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, first woman to be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts Honoree, Grammy Legend and Grammy Lifetime Achievement Awards, induction into the United Kingdom Music Hall of Fame, the GMA Gospel Music Hall of Fame, and the Rhythm and Blues Music Hall of Fame, honorary degree from Harvard, Honorary doctorates in music from Princeton, Yale, and Brown Universities and Berkeley College of Music. Okay. Queen of Soul passed away on August 16th, five years ago, surrounded by friends and family. She was only 76. President Obama at the Kennedy Center Honors had this to say about Aretha following her performance. He said, Nobody embodies more fully the connection between the African-American spiritual, the blues, R&B, rock and roll, the way that hardship and sorrow were transformed into something full of beauty and vitality and hope. Her former producer, Jerry Wexler, described her voice as not that of a child, but rather of an ecstatic hierophant. Fant? Hierophant. Hierophant. That's one word? I had to look that one up myself. (laughs) From the ancient Greeks, a hierophant is a person who brings religious congregates into the presence of that which is deemed holy. (laughs) And what's that mean? (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) You don't know what that means? That means you you are bringing that audience (laughs) to something. Special. It's wetter than a John Mayer concert out here. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> all you know, all the Beatles uh, when they left uh, after the, they left the theater, the seats would be all right, you know. But when the Stones left uh, the theater, they said all the seats for all them girls were sitting were wet. <laughs> hmm. I eat their that. little panties. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From the first time Aretha ever sang in front of people at her daddy's Detroit church in 52, Aretha Franklin's voice has moved millions. She's graced the turntables of young and old around the world and was the envy of angels above. To top it all off, her beautiful mezzo soprano was declared a Michigan natural resource. Her what? A Michigan natural resource in 1985. Her her voice was... Con- was that uh, one word? Yeah, her voice a was... A Michigan natural resource. <laughs> resource. Her what voice what was, the hell does that mean? Was, was named a natural resource. Natural like re- water. Oh, okay. And uh, rain. Oh, and I thought he was like Nashville or Irish. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we... Uh, 
We all been drinking from that well for a long, long time. <laughs> no, let, me get, wrong, let me get to the end of this. <laughs> well, in other words, I guess what we're saying is uh, rest in peace, Retha, because uh, she died. Uh, this this is showing on August 15th, today's episode. And uh, tomorrow will be five years since Retha passed away. So we would, we just want to take our hats off to Retha Franklin one time quick. Retha. Oh! Because she could sing just like that. <clears throat> she sang That's better. what Leon Russell said in his live concerts. When he'd get down on, I think, was it, was it out in the woods? One of them. He'd get down and he'd start doing his, his vocalizing. He'd oh, I wish I could sing like Aretha Franklin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't remember which song it was. Oh he yeah, he put he on. He called out for. He put on a hell of a show, Man. and in 2015, and it was like about it, the next year or the following 2017 that I was lining up to go back out, and uh, when he had the heart attack. Mm. So, was that? Uh, shh, I don't know what age he was. Probably in the mid to late 70s, at least. I don't know, but a hell of a hell of an entertainer. Hmm. While he was here with us, he did a lot, and uh, y'all doing a lot, and we want to see y'all continue to do a lot. We hope that uh, you know everything goes well for you, hmm. and uh, like to get you back on here. You know, maybe at uh, maybe your next crossing of a, you know. You're moving up the ladder, you know. You know, next time you get to uh, a place where you kind of can look back and say, "Hey, I made it this far," you know, like, hey, but. A, like a record mm -hmm. or uh, uh, you know, a recording. Or we also have a deep end. We can have y'all on. Oh hell, I thought uh -huh. we was there already. Yeah, this is kind of <laughs> turning into a deep end. This is kind of <laughs> the beginnings of what that beginnings would, of yeah, a deep. This end and like that would start probably. Mm -hmm. We get wound up. We on get wound there up, wound and, out, and go uh, loose as a goose. Well, yeah. if you ever see that point in my career come up, you just holler. We'll be happy to come back. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Well, folks, we thank y'all for watching again. Uh, like to say thanks to our uh, buddies Will Mosley and Benji Taylor, and I'd like to say thanks to this guy right here for filling in and uh, <laughs> filling in what. I, wherever <laughs> you know he he's he's filling in i'm a full time <laughs> full time over here he's, he's filling in what i'm talking about position. is filling in my blanks you know because oh. he can finish my sentences almost by now we've been knowing each other for so long I'd like so, to thank our uh producer and engineer and uh man about town uh, old, uh justin mercer he's sitting over there off the camera and Jay it's Mercy. A, it's a good thing. <laughs> you don't want to see this turned up. Uh, he, he ain't nothing but a wad of muscle. That's all. He, we call him uh, Big J. We call him. Uh, we call him anything he likes. <laughs> <laughs> we call him <laughs> TU, which stands for turned up. And. Uh, <laughs> and, and we call him. Uh, Turned uh, up Mercy. Fre uh, Freddie Mercury of South Georgia. <laughs> Freddie Mercer. Yeah. Especially when he's got that stash. Just the stash. Just the stash, please. Uh, but we, we do thank you all for watching, and we hope that you'll continue watching. Uh, you know, look us up on uh, somethingwaterpodcast.com where you can see everything about it. And we do have a Patreon account at patreon.com called the deep end, something in water, the deep end. Dave's got an OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> and I do this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we do love y'all. Thank you. And uh, check out Will Mosley and the turnip greens uh, at, uh, uh, all over Facebook. You got some sites on there? You got anything up? I do uh, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of the above. And, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, YouTube. Yeah. Check us out. Check him out on all of those. And uh, uh, 
we do hope you'll uh, tune in for the next podcast because we'll be here. Dave might be in jail, but I'll be here. <laughs> Play the cold black